Hi, welcome to my home. I'm Kurt Jacobson, the fast and furious cook, and today we're gonna to cook one of my favorite dishes ever. It's called Filipino chicken adobo, and this is a dish that was taught to me when I was sailing on the Coast Guard Cutter Eagle and cooking with three experienced Filipino cooks. Now, each one of these guys made theirs a little bit different, and I've made mine even different from them. What we're gonna start out with today is the rice. And I'm gonna cook a California brown rice. This is the first thing I'm gonna start because in a rice cooker, or even on the stove top, the rice can sit there a little while after the chicken uh, is still cooking and it's not gonna hurt it one bit. So I got a cup and a half of rice, and I got three cups of water. And because it's been a little humid, I'm gonna add just a little bit more rice and get this going in the rice cooker. And that's that for the rice. It's gonna be on automatic pilot. I used to always do my rice on the stove top until I started using a rice cooker that was given to me. And these things are great. If you've never tried them, they cook the rice well and they keep it hot for quite a while. So our rice is started. It'll be done in about 45 minutes and the chicken adobo will take about 45 or 50 minutes. So we're gonna move on to the stove and we're gonna do the onions first. And I'm gonna show you um, a method of sauteing that requires no oil. Okay, so now we're here at the stove. I've started my pot heating up. This is a nice enameled cast iron. You want a big pot with a lid for this dish. And many years ago, it was about 1989, I'd learned from a TV show about sauteing with water. And so finally, after a few years, I tried it on the chicken adobo and I couldn't tell the difference between oil sauteed or water sauteed chicken adobo. So I'm gonna use the water today. And the water method calls for just about a quarter inch in the bottom of whatever pot you're using. And we're gonna turn the heat up now. And I'm gonna add all of my onions. And of course, you cut out the oil, you cut out a lot of the calories. What I look for in a lot of the meals that I eat at home is I want it to be fast, I want it to be healthy, and I want it to be fairly simple. Because why spend a lot of time cooking if you don't have to, especially when you can get a really good dish like this. So this requires just a little bit of stirring when it gets going. And while that's heating up, I'm going to grab my garlic press. I'm going to press my garlic cloves right into this. Now, if you've never used a garlic press for some uh, types of cooking where minced uh, garlic is called for, this is a great little invention. I got four cloves of garlic here, different sizes, but it's about the right amount for what I wanna do. You could even use six, seven cloves if you really like garlic. So you can see it's kind of hanging there. So I'm gonna take the dull part of my knife and I'm just gonna scrape that on in. And with that, we're done with the garlic press. This part cooks for about, oh, maximum of five minutes. Mostly just waiting for this pot to get really hot now. And then we're gonna add the chicken. After cooking this for about five, six, seven years, I came up with my own version of this dish, which instead of hot sauce, like the Filipinos taught me, I use jalapenos. And today I'm gonna to use pickled uh, jalapenos right out of the can, because there's just not any good fresh ones to be had. These are plenty hot. I cut up four of them just into rings, or you can even dice it if you want. And you can even put 10 or 12 of those jalapenos in there if you like it really hot. And that's the way I used to make it. But four jalapenos, that'll do for today. And for those of you that don't like it very hot at all, one or two is all you need. And in a big pot like this, this big meal, one jalapeno is not gonna make it too hot even for most of the people out there that dislike hot food. So what we're looking for is the onions will just start getting a little bit soft and then we're gonna to toss the chicken in. But before I do that, I wanna show you something about the way the Filipinos cut up their chicken for this dish. 
Now sometimes they would even take a leg like this and cut that off. And the reason is, is now you have that exposed surface that the seasoning can get into. And so when you get to the chicken breast itself, well they would take that puppy and they would just cut right on down there, cutting it in half. There again exposing all that flesh to absorb that flavor. I'll wash my hands here in just a minute. But, uh, I need to give the onions a stir. We'll take just a little break while I wash my hands. Okay, we're back. My hands are clean again after washing that chicken off. The onions have cooked for just about five minutes and now I'm gonna take all of this cut up chicken. This is one whole cut up chicken that I cut up ahead of time. And I'm gonna dump it on in there. Now you can buy the chicken already cut up and that's just fine. Uh, I, I do recommend, you see this chicken thigh, I do recommend taking the skin off because in this dish, this is not like fried or crispy baked chicken skin. It just doesn't really do that much for the chicken skin to make it that delicious. So why not forego the calories and make this a healthy, healthy dish? So it's just going to require a little bit of stirring for about five minutes max. You kind of want to get the chicken a tiny bit cooked on most of its surface area. And then we'll add our liquids. I have the soy sauce sitting here. It's about one third cup. Uh, if you want to go low salt, go ahead and buy the low salt uh, reduced sodium soy sauce. And then I have vinegar here, which I just use the pickle juice. Uh, instead of throwing that away, it's perfectly good vinegar for this dish. Now some folks, especially in the Philippines, they like more vinegar than I do. I just put in a tablespoon or two at the most, but they would put in as much as a quarter cup. It's kind of a hot and sour dish of sorts. The main flavorings are the onions and the garlic and then the soy sauce and vinegar. Unless you're eating mine and then you taste the jalapeno every time. Because I'm not bashful cooking with jalapenos. So I'm turning the chicken over, getting it nice and uh, brown sort of, seared is more like it on its uh, surface area. And this is such an easy dish to cook. Once we get done with this stirring and we add the liquids, it only needs to be stirred once in the next 30 minutes. And it'll do just fine as long as you get the heat just right and have a lid on it. It cooks all on its own. It's ready typically in 45 to 50 minutes from start to finish. Uh, if you want to cook it for 60 minutes, that's even better. But once you start smelling this, you're going to get hungry and you're not going to want to wait if you don't have to. All right, now the chicken is seared on uh, all surfaces and I'm going to add the pickle juice, which is actually the vinegar in this recipe. And I got my soy sauce. Like I say, a third of a cup uh, is good, but a lot of people might even want a full half a cup or more. You can always add more at the table, so you don't want to get it too salty and not be able to reverse that. And here's my jalapenos. We'll toss them in. Kind of mix them in real good. And now this is pretty much on autopilot for the next 15, 20 minutes. I'm gonna let that just get up to a good boil again and then I'm gonna reduce it to a simmer. Once that lid heats up, it'll reflect that heat back and she'll be on autopilot. Okay, we're back and after 20 minutes, it's time to turn to the chicken to get it submerged. There's some pieces that have been on the top that you can see are very white. After it cooks in the soy sauce, a while it'll turn dark, um, even somewhat brown after oh, about 30 minutes in the sauce. Right now it's still pretty white. Okay, now that that's uh, cooking happily along, I'm gonna put the cover back on it. That's gonna be ready to take on the broccoli in about 10 minutes. Now over the years I've tweaked this recipe many times and the latest incarnation has been with me for oh at least 15 years. I like to make this a two pot meal. We have the rice cooking over there and we have 
that's cooking here. And I found out one day, if I take the broccoli and I cut it into florets and just put it on top of the chicken adobo, put the lid over it, cutting them into florets about that size, I can steam them right on top. Now this is really a good thing because it picks up some of the flavor of the adobo and you don't have to dirty another pot to do it. So I'm cutting up my broccoli for about the right size. Don't want it too small, don't want it too big. About this size or even this size will do. And in 10 minutes when the beeper goes off, we'll just put all this on top, put the lid back on and it'll steam it and we'll have our vegetable and our meat and our sauce all in one pot. And we just put some rice in a bowl and start ladling this on top and it's a great meal. So we'll come back in about 10 minutes and see how it looks when we put the broccoli in. All right, we're back and this has been cooking another 15 minutes after the initial 20 minutes with the chicken in the pot. So now I'm gonna arrange my broccoli in here with the stems down. These actually go into the liquid, the crowns stay out of the liquid. The stems are thicker and they take a little longer to cook. And you don't want to turn the crowns into mush. Once this all goes in here now, it'll be very pretty and green on the top. And it'll take about another five minutes to cook is all. So once I put the lid on, we got about five minutes and it'll be ready to eat. And we can even uh, give it 10 minutes if you don't mind really cooked broccoli. It's all up to the individual. We are back and now comes the best part because it's dinner time. Now, if you've never had this dish before, I wanna show you how to serve it. Get my special rice serving paddle. And I'm gonna take a scoop of that rice. I'm gonna put it pretty much right in the center. And then I have two spoons for this. With chicken adobo, most of the flavor is in the sauce where the onions have started to break down. And if you did just the liquid and didn't get the, the sauce, you'd miss out on these beautiful onions. So I'm gonna take a scoop of those onions and do that. And then I'm gonna use this other spoon and get the liquid. And then pour that over the rice. And then I'm gonna take a piece of chicken Put it there, and I'm going to grab some of this beautiful organic fresh broccoli and arrange it around the side here. That's what it looks like. It smells wonderful. It's time to eat. Hope to see you again here soon. 